Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Business Basics, where we learn about the world and stuff going on. Let's see what's going this on. This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Mm. China is controlling America's weapons industry and dictating really? the pace at which the American military can and will progress. How In so? a shocking move, China just restricted the export of rare earth metals to the uh. United States as retaliation for what the U.S. did with the microchip scenario some weeks back. This new restriction poses a new danger, as advanced U.S. weapons are almost entirely reliant on rare earth materials Ooh. that are almost only made in China, something that Beijing knows all too well. What may come of this debacle is a hurting military, a potential shift in geopolitical power, and an angry United States that's out for blood and more revenge. The news coming out of Beijing might possibly be one of the biggest threats to world peace at this present time. Really? China has decided to ban the export to America of two of rare earth metals, gallium and germanium. They banned it? Damn, I thought they limited it. Of both are crucial for the development of products such as semiconductors, solar panels, electric vehicles, the missile systems, and, and smartphones. Controls on the exports of key rare minerals that only it produces. So, Let's get into details. What are rare earth metals in the first place? And why does everyone seem to want them so badly? What does this China export ban mean for the United States and its allies? And maybe most importantly, what does this mean for the US military and the geopolitics around it? All these are very crucial questions that I'll answer today as we explore this very explosive topic. As always, your support with liking the videos and commenting is very much appreciated. It's that support that gets me going even when the channel covers topics that are less than ideal for the algorithms and sponsors. You know, explosive topics. I really appreciate my business basics family. Now, back to the basics. <laughs> so, where to start with all this? You see, this month, Chinese officials announced that the government will impose export restrictions on gallium and germanium yeah. products, along with other rare earth elements that are used in computer chips and other components. They say they are doing so to protect China's national security interests. For most of us, however, we are seeing this action for what it is. It's retaliation. Earlier this year, the U.S. limited its own exportation of high-tech microchips, something extremely crucial for China, and this left the Asian nation out in the rain. You can click on the link in the description to watch that video. As part of retaliatory measures, China has now cut something crucial for the U.S. as well, rare earth metals. This export restriction, which is going into effect on the 1st of August, is going to critically oh. affect the U.S., oh, given that China ago. enjoys a global dominance in the production of these rare earth metals. In fact, rare earth metals are so far up China's field that the former chairman of the CCP party, Deng Xiaoping, once said, the Middle East has oil, China has rare earth metals. Only now are we starting to realize what the implications that such a monopoly do you know the U.S. solar company's nasty little secret? Well, it turns out if you live in Arizona, they have to give you solar panels for absolutely no net. Napoli has now that it's affecting geopolitics and the very fragile fabric of world peace. Before we proceed, I'm sure some of you are asking, what are these rare earth metals anyway? And how come China can dictate their production? Well, don't worry, I'll answer that for you. We're doing Geology 101 now. These rare earth materials that we're discussing are a group of 17 elements used in products ranging from lasers and military equipment to magnets found in electric vehicles, wind turbines, and consumer electronics like iPhones. Basically, any piece of important modern technology has these rare earth elements. Namely, these 17 elements are lanthanum, cerium, praseodymium, neodymium, promethium, and I'll just put the rest on the screen. They are quite a handful to name and sequence, you know? So, yes, these ones. Even though you might have never heard of half of these elements, you really can't undervalue just how essential they are. One might say they are the vitamin fuel for modern technology. I mean, think about it, and let me repeat this for emphasis. These rare earth elements are necessary components for more than 200 products across a wide range of applications, especially high-tech consumer products like cell phones, computer hard drives, electric and hybrid vehicles, and flat screen monitors and televisions. These are things that everyday people cannot do without, as even our militaries are very dependent on these. Significant defense applications for these rare earth elements include electronic displays, guidance systems, lasers, and radar and sonar systems. 
You see, every military branch from the army to the navy is in critical need of these rare earth elements and hence their importance. It's critical to note that although the amount of rare earth materials used in a product like a fighter jet or a missile guidance system may not be a significant part of that product by weight or value or volume, the rare earth materials are completely necessary for the device to function. In fact, in most products, the rare earth materials often represent only a small fraction of the total weight. But without them, the spindle motors and voice coils of desktops and laptops would not be possible. All this said, isn't it ironic that one nation that controls the entire world's supply of these is America's greatest modern rival, China? Talk about the irony. Before moving on, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped. Now, let's be honest, every guy has encountered some unfortunate itching down there at unfortunate times, like in the gym or before an important meeting. This is where today's sponsor, Manscaped, can help you. Manscaped is trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers. It's a game fourth generation of dense. It's waterproof. You thought that new movie which helps ruin two bag. Today, basics at checkout. Fire. Fire. The question still Fire remains Ed. though. Why China? And why does only China have a monopoly on these rare earth metals? To understand that, we need to understand the formation of these elements. You see, rare earth materials were common when the earth was accreting, and so they are more abundant in the inner parts of the planet. They concentrate on the surface only in places where mantle eruptions have worked their way up through the crust, mostly in igneous materials. But unlike more familiar metals such as gold and copper, rare earth materials don't clump in single element chunks. Instead, rare earth metals all weight together as hot rocks are crystallizing. Recoverable concentrations can be found in several minerals, such as basnesite and monazite. The challenge with rare earth metals is that refining these minerals into individual elements takes many days of heavy processing. Therein lies the problem with these elements and metals. Oh, you see, it's not so much that they are rare, but that they are hard to get. This leaves very few places where they can access and process them, the few being in China. Rare earth mineral extraction is so hard on the environment for a number of reasons, Ooh. and hence its processing and even extraction is difficult. Few countries are in the place where they have the deposits, the technology, and the laws to take advantage of this. Firstly, rare earth minerals are typically found in very low concentrations, which means that a large amount of ore must be mined to extract a small amount of the desired mineral. It's a whole needle in a haystack situation. The needle is so valuable that you want it, but you destroy mountains of hay just to get to it. So in this way, mining rare earth minerals can result in significant environmental impacts, such as Not as land degradation and water pollution. That's why situations like these tend to develop. Another reason oh, rare. why rare earth mineral extraction is difficult is because the minerals are often found in association with other heavy metals, such as thorium and uranium, which, Ooh, you know, can be radioactive. Yeah. This means that special precautions must be taken to ensure the safe handling of these materials. I don't need to explain what uncontrolled radiation can do to humans and the environment. But just in case you were thinking of it, it will turn you into the Hulk. No, I'm kidding, that's just the movies. The real effects are much sadder and fatal. Lastly, the process of extracting rare earth minerals from ore is complex and energy intensive. This can result in significant greenhouse gas emissions and that other looks like a lot of pollution. I think you're starting to see the pattern of environmental degradation here. It's no wonder there is always stark opposition to these mines whenever one is found, much like in the situation here. If the mine gets the go-ahead, the first thing that will affect us is dust, followed by radioactive radiation. Those things will start from the first day of production. And that's going to affect our water supply, and it's only three kilometers away from the mining site, meaning we won't be able to continue living in Narsak. As for why more countries are not mining rare earth minerals, there are a number of reasons for this as well. Firstly, many countries do not have the necessary infrastructure or technical expertise to extract these minerals. I will dig deeper into this point in a few minutes, and you will see why America handed China the reins to its own doom. Additionally, the rare earth minerals are often found in remote or politically unstable regions, which can make mining difficult and risky. 
Finally, many countries are focusing on developing other sources of critical minerals as a way to reduce their dependence on imported rare earth minerals. Oh. However, it might be some time before these are viable enough to dethrone the utility of the rare earth minerals themselves. I mentioned before that the US might have given China the keys to this glorious monopoly. Well, they did. The United States has one of the richest rare earth mineral deposits in the world, a mountain pass in California. Oh. When this deposit was discovered, it was all the rage. But as interest in rare earth materials declined in the US in the late 20th century, China's interest was heating up. Around this time, Chinese scientists had visited during the Nixon administration and taken their knowledge home, applying it to their own rich deposits. As production growth abroad grew and mounting environmental pressures here in the US increased, the production of rare earth minerals was shifted overseas to China, where conditions were quote unquote better. To top it off, China also offered cheaper labor costs, so it was almost a no-brainer. By the end of the 20th century, China was able to undersell the competition and drive most of the rest of the world out of the business. In fact, according to one 2018 report from the Department of Defense, China strategically flooded the global market with rare earth materials at cheaper prices to drive out and deter current and future competitors. Smart. Let's just look at the growth pattern here very quickly. In 1993, 38% of world production of rare earth elements was in China, 33% was in the US, 12% was in Australia, and 5% each was in Malaysia and India. Several then, other countries, including Brazil, Canada, South Africa, Sri Lanka, now, and Thailand made up the remainder. However, in 2008, China accounted for more than 90% of the world's production of rare damn, earth metals. They said we and want by this. 2011, China accounted for 97% of the damn. world's production. All these tactics and rates of progression have left China in a position of envy. At present, China enjoys a whopping large market share of approximately 90% of the production of rare earth elements globally. <laughs> to break it down, China is, by far, the largest producer of usable rare earth metals, accounting for 60% of rare earth mining, 85% of rare earth processing, and 90% of high strength rare earth permanent magnet manufacturing. This puts China squarely in a place where it can control the production of materials critical to green technology and modern-day weapon systems. The US, for all of its might, is completely reliant on China for these minerals that it desperately needs for its various weapon system programs. High temperature magnets, the production of which China owns 100%, is a major component of weapon systems that even the US can't do without. Derek, why'd you take your pants off? My balls was hot. My balls was hot. Hi, my name is Derek. This gives China a tremendous edge in the game of geopolitics. I'll dive more into that in just a minute. What okay. is clear to see is that China's power within the rare earth market has created a supply chain dominance that has made it impossible for other countries to contend with them on any impactful level. It has also given China significant leverage over economic adversaries. The truth of the matter is that China is so far ahead in the extraction and production of these rare earth elements that even if the US began to pour resources into these industries today, it would still have to fight pretty significantly to even find footing. Not dominance, just footing. China's many years in the game has given it access to information, knowledge, and skill sets that are far beyond those of its fellow nations. True. That's why it's critical to realize that China's economic dominance in these markets doesn't come from the physical mining of tech metals, but instead from the refining and processing of them. That information they got it down is to the a critical key bedrock so that China's they don't dominance. waste resources. They might not have all the world's deposits, but they know how to best process deposits that are not even theirs. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. China doesn't mine any cobalt, but despite this, it refines 85% of the world's cobalt. Damn. To add to that, it also controls 100% of the world's graphite production, a necessary metal for electric vehicles. All this just speaks to China's dominance of the industry. What makes China's monopoly of this entire sector scary is the insatiability of Beijing's foreign policy. In all fairness, according to them, it's simply protection of their own interests, even if they clash with the rest of the world. That playing out of foreign policy by different nations is what can result in actions such as what's happening right now. For example, China's retaliation came after the U.S. government took certain steps. What steps, you ask? These. 
Alarm bells are ringing in the United States. This time on semiconductors. U.S. officials have ordered in chip export restrictions to China. Washington has imposed sweeping controls on exports of semiconductors. Described as the harshest ban on China's high-tech industry ever implemented. It all started on the 7th of October last year, when the Biden administration imposed a sweeping set of export controls meant to curb China's growth. These included measures to cut off China from certain semiconductor chips and chip-making equipment, something that is critical in the manufacturing of modern technology. No, really, microchips are essential in everything, from your fridge to your yeah, sure. Under these rules, U.S. companies were directed to cease supplying Chinese chip makers with equipment that can produce relatively advanced chips unless they first obtained a license. It goes without saying that this license was and is still incredibly hard to acquire. The new regulations imposed also added controls on some semiconductor production items and transactions for specific end uses of some integrated chips or circuits. The U.S. also wanted to increase its export controls to include semiconductor products and software, technology, and other things used to develop and make integrated circuits. As a further restriction, U.S. citizens and green card holders have also been banned from working on certain technologies for Chinese companies and entities. Basically, Washington said if it's China, it's a no. This was Washington's own move to restrict China's growth. China, realizing what this meant, has now decided to have its own vengeance, and hence it institutes its own bans on rare earth metals. China decided to restrict exports of with gallium or germanium. Two elements used to build computers. I mean, I guess you can't blame them. Essential for microchips. Because they're just responding. Vehicles, fiber optic cables. China produces 95% of the world's supply. Now that China has played this hand, it has become increasingly apparent to the U.S. and her allies that China can weaponize access to its rare earth minerals whenever it chooses to do so. This threat is now pushing Western countries to find new sources of supply and alternate solutions, given the severity of this matter. This ain't the first time China has used the rare earth elements to its advantage. It first happened in 2010, so let me take you back. In September of 2010, a Chinese fishing boat rammed two Japanese Coast Guard vessels in the contested East China Sea Islands. The Japanese government announced its intention to put the this. Oh. Multiverses. I thought it was an EVE Online fishing boat's captain on trial, given that he was assumed to have been drunk and hostile when the event occurred. Damn, bro, drunk Seeing on the job. Seeing this, the Chinese crazy. government retaliated with several measures that included an embargo on rare earth sales to Japan. This could potentially have had a devastating effect on Japan's industries, given that, at a point, they were 100% reliant on China's rare earth elements. Their auto industry in particular relied big time on the cooperation they had with China, as rare earth elements are a crucial part of catalytic converters of engines. China proceeded to threaten a limited supply of rare earth metals to the rest of the world. This threat was taken seriously enough that the United States, the European Union, Japan, and several other nations filed suit with the World Trade Organization in protest. The World Trade Organization then ruled that China could not put limits on rare earth exports for the benefit of... Bro, the thing I always wonder about this, it's like, there's some, it's, it's actually insane how there's some crazy rich people that we don't even know that owns the world. Like, 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 bro. There's literally countries that are like, yeah, uh, we 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 don't want that to happen, so we're gonna go file a suit against you guys at this World Trade thing. Who knows who controls it against China? And they're like, yeah, you can't do that, China. And China has to listen. That is crazy. Of other global economies. This ruling, however, was not immediate, and it did not occur until four years after the filing. And by this time, the Chinese foreign ministry was denying that it had imposed an embargo, saying that China needs more rare earth minerals for its own developing industries, which in all fairness were growing pretty exponentially. This fact may be supported that even before this, by 2005, China had been restricting exports, causing concern in the Pentagon about shortages of four rare earth metals, namely lanthanum, cerium, europium, and gadolinium, that were causing delays in producing certain weapons. However, in light of China's other actions, it's hard to tell. 
even when China was forced to export rare earth metals, it still worked against the rest of the globe. This is because China then flooded the market with cheaper rare earth metals and forced all the upcoming industries and other nations to close down, as they simply could not compete with the Chinese prices. This increased China's monopoly, making it even more concentrated than before, Damn. as several nations now relied on them. Back to the cause of this, the 2010 Japanese dispute. Although Japan later released the Chinese captain, this incident alerted Japan that it had to find other ways of obtaining rare earth metals. Within weeks of the incident, Japanese experts were visiting countries with other significant rare earth resources, such as Mongolia, Vietnam, and Australia, to make inquiries. By November of 2010, Japan had reached a tentative long-term supply agreement with Australia's Linus Group. Japan now obtains 30% of its rare earth metals from Linus. Interestingly, state-owned China non-ferrous metal mining had tried to purchase a majority stake in Linus only a year crazy. before. Given China's own large deposits of rare earth, it's easy to see that this purchase was spearheaded by China's own desire to corner the world market for supply as well as production. The Australian government blocked the sale to prevent that from happening. This was one of the first signs of other nations retaliating and lashing out at China's monopoly. For the United States, the issue of rare earth metals arose again in the context of the U.S.-China trade war. In May of 2019, China's leader Xi Jinping paid a well-publicized and highly symbolic visit to a rare earths mine in Xiangxi that was interpreted as highlighting the leverage his government has over Washington. Lest the implication be missed, Renmin Ribao, the official newspaper of the Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee, wrote, We advise the U.S. side not to underestimate the Chinese side's ability to safeguard its development rights and interests. Don't say we didn't warn you. Pretty direct threat, don't you think? Observers noted that the expression, don't say we didn't warn you, is typically used by official media only for very serious situations, such as in 1978, before China invaded Vietnam, and in a 2017 border dispute with India. Now, the secret behind any great burger, of course, is in the color, making sure you've got a India. To add to American concerns, as more advanced weapons are developed, which is constantly happening with the U.S. military, more rare earth metals are needed. Metals that are almost entirely owned by their greatest rival since the Cold War. Let me put this into context for you to understand it better. For every F-35 fighter jet to be made, it requires 920 pounds of rare earth, and each Virginia-class submarine needs 10 times that amount, about 9,200 pounds. Given that the U.S. and its ridiculous budget are constantly adding more weapons to the arsenal, we simply need more rare earth metals now than ever before. China knows this, and hence the interference. The Pentagon knows its compromised position, hence actions like this. Along with other countries, recently Japan has been exploring the possibility of tapping into deep undersea reserves. These nations are just desperately grasping at alternatives to try and have a foothold in the industry so that China doesn't dominate the industry going into the next few decades. But certain facts of this situation are hard to deny, and this is why it might keep the balance of power skewed. As eager as nations like the US and Japan are to topple China, it simply isn't that easy. A big part of that is because the extraction of rare earth elements is not easy at all. Extracting rare earth metals is truly a difficult process due to a combination of environmental, technical, and political factors. Many regions, including the European Union, have an abundance of these resources, but lack the expertise that other countries like China have in the processing and magnet production. Let's start with the environmental problems. The rare earth elements industry has come under fire for environmental concerns. Yeah, Many that rare earth doesn't elements look reside among mineral deposits with breathe. radioactive materials that can leach into the water table. Mining, processing, and disposal can also contribute to ecosystem disruption and release hazardous byproducts into the atmosphere. Japan is the perfect example of this. The nation made a discovery as it found over 16 million tons of rare earth materials hidden beneath the seabed in the Western Damn. Pacific Ocean. This amount of rare earth metals would provide a significant breakthrough to Japan's current dilemma. It's not that easy though, at least not yet. 
Despite being in possession of such deposits, Japan simply does not have a safe and effective way of extracting these minerals. The minerals are buried 6,000 meters deep in the ocean, making their extraction difficult. While the Japanese researchers who discovered the deposits claim they also have created an effective method to extract these minerals, questions remain as to how this method could be scaled. It goes without saying that to mine such a deposit would need a scalable, large-scale, safe mm -hmm, extraction mm -hmm. method, and currently, there are no profitable methods of producing rare earth minerals embedded more than five kilometers below the seabed. Based on current methods, producing only a thousand tons of metals would require mining more than one million tons of mud. Damn, to extract that's a lot of mud. metals with present technology, a device called a piston corer collects mud from the stratum under the 6,000 meter deep seafloor. The process is agonizingly slow, since the corer takes over 200 minutes to reach the seafloor. Reaching and then extracting is mud is just the beginning of the refining process, and other concerns impinge as well. There are potential dangers to the environment, with several scientists concluding that the seabed stratum could collapse due to the force of the circulating Ooh, water, they spilling them? the drilled rare earth materials and mud Deeper. into the ocean. Commercial factors must also be considered too, because you see, 3,500 tons need to be collected daily to make the business profitable because at the end of the day, a lot. all this is being done for profit. At present, only 350 tons can be collected in a 10 hour day using current technology. Yeah, the effects that that zero. Have on the ecosystem are devastating. So what Japan is struggling with is a perfect illustration of industry-wide challenges that nations are facing. Extracting rare earth minerals from whatever source, be it the land or the sea, is time consuming and expensive. China, on the other hand, controls nearly all of the world's processing facilities, with even rare earth metals taken from the ground in other countries being sent there for refining, as they simply do it best. Seeing all of this and how vulnerable it is, the US is making strides to advance the rare earth supply chain and develop alternatives to mining rare earths as environmental I know my gun should be stored locked and unloaded. Yeah, you do. What good is a gun? Regulations are often more stringent than inside of China. This then limits the US in terms of what they can do. In a similar fashion, in recent years, Linus, an Australian rare earths mining company with two major operations, came under scrutiny from activists and oh. the Malaysian government for radioactive waste that it produces as part of its enrichment process. Linus has said that the low levels of radioactive waste were not dangerous and the Malaysian government ultimately renewed the license and greenlighted a construction plan for a permanent disposal and waste treatment facility in August of 2020. Such things highlight the hurdles presented when such operations are conducted outside of China. To maximize benefits and limit challenges, some companies have proposed extracting rare earths from coal, while others suggest setting up a system for recycling old batteries or disk drives. Would that work? Suggestions include calls to utilize shipping services like Amazon or USPS to set stuff. up a recycle system. But these endeavors can be costly. They are also riddled with several other flaws, which make them unsuitable for use at the present moment. Mixed with other recycling metals. of key raw materials used in the electric vehicle space is receiving greater investment focus. Some emerging battery recycling leaders, including Redwood Materials, a startup from former Tesla CTO J.B. Straubel, and Lycycle, which recently announced plans to go public through a SPAC merger. Here in the U.S., the Ames Laboratory in Iowa is one of many Department of Energy's national laboratories working on projects aimed at substituting rare earths or finding new, more eco-friendly methods to recover them. <laughs> One initiative is a rare earth magnet recycling process designed to recover rare earth oxides without the hazardous acids or fumes associated. Scientists are also using the process to recover byproducts like copper and nickel. Another laboratory in Idaho is looking at how potato wastewater can be used as a cheap food source for bacterium that can assist in recycling rare earths. Potato so wastewater see, is diversifying crazy. Diversifying the sources of rare earth metal purchases may prompt a renewed debate about the environmental consequences of rare earth metal processing which creates toxic waste and has a high risk of causing damage to both the environment and to human health. <laughs> These realities are embarrassing to those who advocate the use of technology like wind turbines and electric vehicles to save the environment. Well, because of the implications that rare earth metals have in the process. 
Is it really renewable and eco-friendly if the process of making the same equipment devastated the environment? If China is no longer willing to do the world's dirty work, what will happen is that we may find ourselves with a national and global debate on the dangers and downsides of rare earth processing. China, by itself, may use its investments in the rare earth industry to move the dirtiest parts of production to locations outside of China, but still under Chinese financial control, thus relocating the pollution to poorer countries. This keeps part of the dirty Damn. work out of their hands, but the profit and control firmly grasped by Beijing. In line with its restrictions on the exportation of rare earth metals, if China makes good on its threats, we should expect the price of rare earth metals to rise. Even if the sanctions do not work to prevent the US from gaining access to rare earth metals, they will likely lead to supply chain issues and rising costs. And the same is true if we start to process these metals. What's going to cost more? This means higher prices for Western consumers. And that includes everything from smartphones to green oh, energy. My God. Should Beijing's the threat phones. be fulfilled, ramifications will be felt well beyond the corridors of Washington. What this means is that we might have to brace for a potentially more expensive future. Does that then mean there is no future in rare earth processing without China? No. In the long run, monopolistic behavior will be solved by the interconnected markets on which modern society is built. The narratives between great powers may be swiftly changing, but the fundamental rules of how we all operate stays the same. If Beijing keeps calling these bluffs and using the weaponization of the rare earth industry, the more likely that pressure will be applied on the two competitive market forces already working towards solutions. We have already intensified these factors in the last couple of years. What are these factors then? Well, the first is the potential for new market entrants. Rising Chinese export tariffs and spiking prices signal opportunity. Canada, India, and the United Kingdom have all recently announced their intent to develop their first domestic refineries for rare earth elements, with national security interests undoubtedly providing propulsion. If you threaten people for long enough, it should not be surprising when they start to look for solutions that don't involve you. True. And as much as these nations cannot match what China has invested in this industry as of now, relatively small investments now could pay off. Dude, this is a horrible gaming experience. How do you live like this? Oh, my bad. I, know, bro. Is, I didn't know it was what? Do I look big by shaking up market dynamics later this decade? This is why the United States could seed promising ventures abroad and consider this high profile sector an opportunity to build up friend shoring partnerships with alternate producers. What kind of signatures? Think that? of the old adage an enemy of my enemy is my friend. Well, China is the universal enemy in this. The second factor is the threat of substitutes. Necessity is the mother of invention, and if substitutes can replace rare earths in end-use products, then supply fears may be sidestepped. What do you the think funds would go up to if they have already been driving manufacturers like, like Toyota bandit. and Volkswagen to redesign their electric motors magnets to use and the less rare comes earth out, material, how much you think it would cost? Use alternative magnet materials. If these two factors can be developed along with the necessary technology, the world would be less reliant on China, and hence China would have less of an advantage in this. The US, for one, would prefer alternatives to rare earth metals given its current reliance on China. The US energy, defense, and commerce departments have been pursuing alternatives. But governments should also consider rewarding companies that find innovative ways of designing their products without rare earth elements in the style of bug bounties. Even without implementing substitutes, Let's establishing backup options builds supply chain resilience and saps the power of a monopoly. That has to be a future focus. Tetra Tonight is one promising breakthrough in magnetic alternatives. Until recently, this nickel-iron alloy was only observed in meteorite samples. But last year, it was successfully replicated in a University of Cambridge laboratory. Experts say it has an outside chance of upending the entire rare earths industry in the years to come. Aside from pressing into the two competitive market forces of new entrance and substitution, the United States should continue subsidizing the rapid development of its rare earth supply chains, particularly the midstream layers, ore processing, mineral refinement, and alloying. The faster it can do so, the more narrow the window will be for President Xi Jinping to play hardball during the waning years of China's monopoly, and the less likely that opportunity will coincide with an attempted invasion of Taiwan. Yes, rare earth metals also coincide with the invasion of Taiwan. 
China has made it no secret that it wants Taiwan, and the more dominance it has on the global stage, the more it can run wild with its ideas and agendas. What is abundantly clear to the US and all the other countries in the global economy is this. President Xi Jinping's wolf warrior diplomacy is not sustainable. And unless solutions are found to curb the rare earth monopoly that China is currently enjoying, there is trouble up ahead. Only time will tell if truly China can be dethroned or if indeed China's restrictions will give them even more power and strength on a global scale. Very good video by Business Basics. Hold on. Can't skip that. But yeah, I wonder how much stuff with the rare metals would cause. Meet Grammarly Go. What is this? Your go-to solution. This video is... I was like, what the hell? Uh, the only reason China is a main explorer of Earth's rare metal Earth materials is because of complexity. It's not that we don't have access to it. Like, everything dealt it was just cheaper to let them do it. I see. We'll give the push. We find better sources. Hmm. I mean, they're not wrong. I wonder how much a phone would cost. Because I think right now, like, a new iPhone is like 1500 I'm not sure, though. Hold on. Uh oh. No, no, it's iPhone is iPhone 15, right? Hold on, let's see. Newest iPhone. iPhone 14. It was iPhone. Oh, it's 800. I thought it was like. Why did I think it was so much more? That's just a Pro. Or that's just a regular version. The Pro is a thousand. How much more do you think it would cost? That's interesting. But yeah, let me know your guys' opinion on this and see you guys. Bye.